The film Megan has ridden on spectacular marketing efforts, using the menacing, realistic little girl robot as the face that it's named after. The human-like machine dressed in old-fashioned attire with blonde hair and blue eyes has become quite a recognizable character. She now exists as a meme that's been promoted through the internet, people have cosplayed as her, and she's become several times better known than your ordinary run-of-the-mill scary movie that never escapes the bounds of the cinema screen. Bloomhouse Productions is no stranger to drumming up publicity. It could have achieved the same goals even in a different way too. Malignant was written by Akila Cooper, the same woman that wrote the screenplay for Megan. Cooper has written for TV shows for a long time while dabbling in horror movies. Malignant was directed by James Wan. Together, in 2021, he and Cooper managed to turn Malignant, which combined jump scares with disgusting horror sights, into a major phenomenon upon its release. Since the miraculous success of Megan, in which she and Wan combined their efforts, Bloomhouse has hired the services of the brilliant TV and scary movie screenwriter to write up The Nun, a spin-off of Conjuring. Megan has a lot more humorous appeal to it than does Malignant. It isn't quite as serious and injects quite a bit of fun, frivolous chasing to which people can easily relate. Indeed, the course of events that transpire in Megan feature a broader taste range than Malignant does, the latter being more of a pure horror film people love to freak out about the robot. The robot in a body resembling a little girl comes with some sense of innocence, and combined with the robot's taking over the world type of science fiction, she makes her a wholesome yet unsettling villain. This puts her in such company as Voldemort, the Gremlins, and Little Shop of Horrors. Oogie Boogie from The Night Before Christmas is another favorite fans will look upon in a similar light, and one cannot help but discuss Megan alongside other killer dolls. Of course, these characters vary greatly in their motives. Megan actually started out with good intentions in mind, and believes herself to be doing the right thing, the thing she is programmed to do, to protect her owner Katie, played by Violet McGraw. Oogie Boogie and the plants from the Little Shop of Horrors, meanwhile, are fueled by pure evil and hunger, respectively. The first shots of the movie feature lurid comedy and a dark playfulness as Katie sits playing with her hairy pet doll on her car seat. In a horrific turn of events, her parents get killed in a freak accident while out of town on a skiing trip by a snowplow. The movie moves on to a show of the little girl's Aunt Gemma, played by Allison Williams. The woman works as an inventor at a Seattle toy store entitled Funky. As the person now charged with the task of raising Katie, Gemma never planned on being a mother, and her personality isn't very well suited for it. One of the reasons is she's a career woman with her mind on her job. She likes her toys more than children even do. She enjoys collecting them and doesn't want anything to happen to them. For that reason, she keeps them packaged, safe and sound on her floor. The circumstances, however, have forced the two to learn to live together and build a relationship. If Aunt Gemma fails to convince the psychiatrist that she's fit to be her guardian, Katie will have to become a foster child. Gemma decides that the best thing she can do to help the situation is get a cyborg named Megan, short for Model 3 Generative Android. This robot's AI is extremely efficient as well as its learning ability. It is eerily similar to a real human being in its appearance, and thus is capable of looking after Megan and educating her. She even puts discipline on Katie to eat right, keep good manners, and not do things that get her dirty. The cyborg is a dream come true for a parent, and a wonderful friend for a child. She's always there and allows moms and dads to do what they want. She is a prototype, and Katie will be their guinea pig that they are going to test her on. If all goes well, the man Gemma works for will be rich indeed. Sounds perfectly safe. There is no way it could suddenly go to hell in a handbasket, is there? Gerard Johnson helped provide shrewd acting advice in Megan, since his delightful success in Housebound. He managed to unify all the subplots nicely and subtly. It goes without saying that the feelings of robots are a theme much like the early book Frankenstein. 
However, much of its appeal owes to a creepy cyborg who blurs the lines between human and inhuman with an eerie playfulness and jump scares. Sure, there are many unanswered questions in this movie, and it has its rough patches. It's also intended for children to be able to watch it, so any guts and gore are limited. The cyborg does start to go nuts in the movie, but then it seems to have been truncated at that point to maintain the rating. The uncomfortable creepiness of the robot still makes the film a good time though. The director time and time again takes advantage of the lulls in the robot's personality. An actress is instructed to imitate random, aggressive movements which brings back a lot of images, such as the conjuring demon climbing the stairs, a drunk girl at a party, or the C-3PO shifting from Star Wars. The way the girl looks and the way she moves around like an animal is reminiscent of a gremlin. Her lame attire and clever retorts are truly entertaining, even nowadays with as sarcastic as people like to converse. One of the funniest parts that sums up her personality is when Gemma takes Katie on a drive to check out another school for the girl to go to. While Gemma is out at work, a teacher greets Megan and Katie sitting in a car together. Little did she know that one of them is not a girl at all. Her head turns around with an ominous noise and scares the crap out of her as she attempts to calm herself down by pretending it's funny. All the viewers will join her for sure. Anybody encountering that type of creature for the first time would react accordingly. Only people who are used to her or are exposed to her through marketing campaigns are able to see the fun in the character. 